it so it is far more uh, it's any bad accounting system in the future it will be far easier to agencies have far better access to, to keep this or totally different from the owners that were occurring back then this case is part of a crackdown and uh, Tony and I both indicate this uh, that the, both the FBI and the US Attorney's Office are increasingly working on the defense uh, contract in any of the government contract areas and there is much greater resources now working on this uh, uh, here locally and nationally and so I think it is part of an overall effort to really crack down on this kind of fraud. And was right in the middle of it. At 10 o'clock this morning, Bertha Jacobs must have been a little confused. Ten hours before, she had been in the path of the tornado that wreaked havoc on the small town where she lived. Bertha had been pulled from her mobile home by the storm. At least one of her neighbors was dead, and others had injuries ranging from scrapes to broken bones. Hit the bathtubs off. And that's all, and I feel fine. Some are in serious condition. Others still missing. I got right out in the middle of the street. When the feisty 55-year-old lady was brought into the Okmulgee Hospital this morning, she insisted she was not hurt. She wanted to go home to pick up the pieces. Everything I got in my trailer house is just sitting there. All I need to do is get it, put it in the house someplace, and I'm ready to set up housekeeping again. At home, the tornado had ripped limbs from trees and replaced them with insulation and twisted aluminum. My ice box, my deep In a perverse sort of way, Bertha was lucky. The damage she had to sort was confined to a small area. The belongings of others had been scattered over blocks, perhaps miles. Will they ever get it cleaned up? In a matter of moments, Bertha Jacobs and her neighbors lost nearly everything. But spirit is something developed over a lifetime. And a moment of nature won't gone. take it away. But I'm here. Now then it's just pick it up. What I can save, start over. Charles Schnitzer, News 4, Morris, Oklahoma. We found out that lots of police agencies wait 24 to 48 to 72 hours before even filing a missing child's report. Well, lots of children are murdered within that 24 hours, so we have mandated it by law that police cannot wait, not to search, but to look, but to institute the missing child report.
The driver of this school bus thought twice before crossing the bridge that used to be here. It might have been the sign posting a five-ton limit. His bus weighed about three times that, empty. And it was empty. He had enough reservation to unload a high school baseball team before he started across. As I proceeded to go across the bridge, about halfway across, the structure started giving, and the bus driver felt it starting to give, but there wasn't anything to do. Signs posting weight limits are ignored frequently. Usually nothing happens, but heavy loads do weaken the structure, and the county tells us only about 50 percent of those ignoring the signs ever get caught. Particularly the heavy construction equipment and um, oil field workers, and you know, with their heavy trucks going across them. And that's causing failure under the bridge, and sometimes you can't tell it by looking at the top of it. It just gets shaky, and then you look underneath it, and it's, uh, you know, it has failed. So we, we close those places that, uh, you know, that we think are going to be unsafe for the public. County Commissioner Fred Snyder tells us it will cost about $200,000 to replace the bridge, and the Enid School District, owners of the bus, will be held liable. Terry Cook, News 4. my car rust. We wanted to be the first one to jump on the horse racing bandwagon in Oklahoma. Uh, when the people of Oklahoma voted to have horse racing, we thought, well, what a great idea to raise money with horse racing. And so we were the first ones to have races in Oklahoma.
Tornado victims have few alternatives. When last month's twister blasted Pru, Oklahoma, there was little residents could do except sift through the debris, hoping to salvage a few items. The initial shock from the storm is worn off, and now Pru residents have come to terms with the harsh reality that everything they've worked so hard to achieve is gone. Okay, do you have furniture down there at that house and everything? Today, the Federal Emergency Management Agency opened its doors in Pawnee County to help disaster victims start picking up the pieces. Everyone waiting in this room is applying for temporary housing. Imogene Broomhall has nothing left. She is in desperate need of federal assistance. There's a piece of the west wall, there's a piece of the north wall, and that's it. That's it. It's gone. First, you know, it was all important to get back there and clean it up. Now we don't know. We don't know. We just got to live one day at a time now. A myriad of agencies have set up shop at the Cleveland Community Center. FEMA Director Marilyn Darby explains some of the options available. They've got temporary housing available. If your home was blown away or damaged in any way, we have Small Business Administration. It has low interest rate loans available. We just have a multitude of different agencies in here. Ready. Federal disaster workers promise to stay in Pawnee County until all of the tornado victims have been attended to. And with the amount of destruction in the area, they could be in town for a long time. Kurt Autry, News 4, Pawnee County. Uh, a proposal to initiate another uh, sales tax times now. Once a joint meeting with the Water Trust, we've discussed revenue bonds. The sewage treatment plant must be built. And I think that, that the state hopes to uh, approve a, a penny sales tax on a... Mr. Gilbert? He has one question. It is called, Mr. Gilbert, is not the answer. And you want us to get on the road because you know full well that we're not dumb enough to go and try to charge developers and bind the whole city so that you can stand on the sideline and wave your red flag and say, oh, I told you so, I told you so, I told you so. It is time for us to graduate from the second grade of economics. You know, the Soviet Union's been responsible for a lot of um, terrible tax attacks uh, of aggression. They shot down the Korean airliner just last September. Uh, this month today, they have uh, over 100,000 troops in Afghanistan. They've been bombing villages uh, within the last couple of weeks. So I'm not really that disappointed that they're not participating in, in the Olympics. I think the reason why they decided not to is they were probably afraid of about half of their uh, athletes would uh, defect. Well, I would think so. We've tried to maintain a little consistent growth every year. We've tried to be a profitable company every year, although the first two or three weren't necessarily that way. But uh, we've just tried to maintain a steady, consistent growth. I was asked to explain the difference between a small businessman and a big businessman. And my answer was that a big businessman is what a small businessman would be if only the government would get out of the way and leave him alone. <laughs>
clearly one of the major objectives was, as you say, deinstitutionalization. Another one of the objectives was to establish minimum standards of child care in Oklahoma. And uh, I think that the uh, present settlement agreement uh, accomplishes those goals, and uh, I'm confident that the state will continue to make progress in that direction. Lawmakers say that by April next year, the Department of Corrections will have to begin triple selling. They say more beds will simply fill up quickly, and the solution must be to slow down the incoming flow of prisoners. Oklahoma already has a house arrest law, and some officials say that law may be expanded soon and moved into the electronic age. Some offenders will be allowed to stay at home and keep jobs, but would be confined at home by night. The inmate would wear an electronic band on his wrist or ankle. A signal from the band would be monitored by a corrections officer, and if the band is tampered with or the inmate violates curfew, the system knows and he is sentenced to hard time. Representative Cal Hobson says the state may also consider chemical castration, drugs to lower sex drives of sexual offenders, rendering them theoretically harmless. Hobson says experiments with both plans are lowering prison populations and crime rates in other states. He thinks Oklahoma may be ready to begin experiments of its own. We're almost there. We just ran out of legislative days this year. We need to look at the example south of our border to Texas. They passed a package, 19 different programs in the corrections department down there. The population, the inmate population has gone from 39,000 to something below 34,000 and the crime rate dropped. Right now, corrections officials are trying to keep their many inmates active and out of trouble. They already have the authority to implement some of those experiments, but those programs are controversial, and it's doubtful they will begin until they have the go-ahead from the legislature Mark and the governor. Charles Schnetzer, News 4. It didn't require a peer report or an Ernst & Winnie to identify things that could be improved. And what I'm saying is some of those improvements may even have their origins with me.
it's hard for us to force them to. Uh, we're doing just as much as we can with what we have and we're going to be trying even harder to get back into compliance with the uh, 55 speed limit and uh, hopefully this will add a little bit to it. Lift it up as we sing it together, deck the halls with boughs of holly. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. It means a lot. It cheers up the kids. Our kids has really been down low on this. My little grandson cries a lot about his house and things like that. What did you get? Uh, hose and books and a makeup kit. And I haven't had a chance to look at all of it yet. A lot of stuff. Josh, what did you get? Uh, a Superman book. Separate but equal was not equal, according to the Supreme Court. In 1954, with the Brown v. Topeka School Board ruling, they opened the door to every public school in America. Before the decision, a majority of those doors had been closed to blacks. Even before the Brown decision, Oklahoma had experienced desegregation controversy on a major scale. A black female graduate from Langston had been denied enrollment at the OU Law School. Two years later, she was in by order of the Supreme Court. The law under which they were acting was a foolish law, but that was the law. And uh, I had, you know, uh, enough sense to know that the way to go was not to be angry at the people that were administering the law, but try to get the law removed from the books. The effort to make desegregation work is carried on now by teachers like Clara Looper. Looper was an early activist in Oklahoma, but now focuses her attention on helping students understand. But opponents argue desegregation has prompted unrest in some cases. Since 1966, 34,000 students have left the Oklahoma City School District. Most of the laws can be attributed to busing. After three decades of desegregation, its merits and faults are still being debated. Kevin Ogle, News 4. In one of the largest gambling raids in city history, 110 officers hit six homes in a warehouse early this morning, confiscating thousands in gambling paraphernalia. Among the homes raided was that of alleged longtime city gambler Tracy Coy Pody Poe, who has been charged in the past with an alleged sports gambling operation. But neither Poe or any of the others allegedly involved were arrested on gambling charges. Tell us what happened. Twelve arrests were made, but all were for narcotics or handgun violations. A police spokesman said the raids were not intended to harass small-time bettors. Police were clearly after the operators, and they believe they got what they were looking for.
tables, cards, dice, uh, records. That's uh, what we were looking for, and so far we've been able to recover most of the things that we were looking for. The investigation that led to this morning's raid had been going on for more than two years. Police undercover agents had been used to penetrate the alleged gambling operation. What officials confiscated this morning will go to a county grand jury next week and is also being investigated by federal officials. Oklahoma City police say not arresting those found running the alleged gaming houses is new for local officials. But they say they want to put together, quote, the best possible case before issuing any arrest warrants. Jeff Fowler, News 4. The proms began in Oklahoma City last night, and they will continue for the next couple of weeks. And the warnings to young people will continue as well. Drinking and driving don't mix. Bob Coker drives for Yellow Cab. He hopes to take some of these festive high school seniors home tonight. After, what, 12 years of going to school, and uh, they graduate, and they get plastered. They drink, they party, and can't drive think they can, but they can't. And Yellow Cab tries to help them out by keeping them alive. Yellow Cab is offering free rides to any high school seniors who've been drinking and should not be driving. The ride is just a phone call away, and it's an important phone call. 25% of all traffic accidents in Oklahoma involve a drinking teenager. Call Yellow Cab, get a free ride home, stay alive, go to college. Terry Cook, News 4. We may have to look at legislation to change the relationship of the FDIC to the Congress. It's a very independent agency. Uh, I don't want to make it uh, just another federal agency. It needs some independence, but maybe we need better procedures for oversight by Congress and for reporting to Congress. And I'm not sure exactly what all the options are going to be, but I guarantee we're going to be spending a lot of time looking into them. Speaker, what I am very interested in. Jim, I, I don't know if it'll be done today. Say metric, and then there a legal question there. Well, yes, I think that's the problem. I'm, I'm not at all surprised that the judge grants. Uh, certainly, the uh, borders of Payne County, District 34, that voted for him and then voted for me, uh, are the ones that have to make the ultimate decision about who, who's going to represent them. Will you run again? When I read the uh, the resolution, that I thought it was rather humorous, uh, saying that our being back would disrupt an orderly adjournment. If there's any disruption, it will be caused not by Joe or myself, but by those who are introducing such resolutions.
Midshipman Holderied. Victory, the watchword today for Christine Holderied, the first woman to graduate at the top of the class at a military academy. For Holderied, today marks the beginning of what she hopes will be a bright career future, and she thanks the U.S. Navy for that. But while Holderied's victory story was unfolding in Annapolis today, a story of defeat was unfolding here in Oklahoma City. Joe Harris says she was disqualified for Navy recruitment based on a history of being underweight. It was just 10 months ago that Harris gave up custody of her son to join the Navy, learn a trade, and then eventually reunite her family. Those hopes are gone now. I'm disqualified, I understand, for a year. I'm 28, and there's no way I'm going to go back and go through all that hassle all over again. They had their chance. Do you feel like they've lost a, a good member? I know they've lost a good member. And now, after the 10-month battle to get in, Harris must regain custody of her son. She says she can't afford that right now. Navy officials told News 4 today they were not prepared to make a statement, but would perhaps tomorrow. Dan Slocum, News 4. Dr. Leslie A. Fisher has served this day to State Superintendent of Public 